Hello, it's Scott Manley here. As many of you undoubtedly know, I'm in the process of learning to fly. I've been doing this since like March, getting hours here and there, and basically learning all the skills that I need to do this thing that I have spent a long time doing in the virtual world. Like, right now, I am really spending a lot of time just focusing on landings. Because, you know, landing is the one place where you're likely to damage the aircraft since you are having to bring it in contact with the ground. So yeah, I've gone to different locations, I've been practicing landing at night, I've been practicing in strange gusty crosswind conditions when the sun is dazzling me in the eyes and the instructor is telling me no, I'm not allowed to use any flaps because that would make it too easy. And truthfully, one of the things that's guaranteed to put a big grin on my face while training is when the instructor says, let's try something a little more challenging. And look, I'm not implying in any way that I'm particularly good at this. In fact, I think I'm taking way longer than I expected because, like, the hand-eye coordination is very different from what I've been used to. However, I went into the academic side of this thing fully loaded with a lot of pre-existing knowledge, and I kind of want to pay tribute to something that really taught me how planes are set up and how they fly. Kerbal Space Program. If you've known me since the early days, you'll know that I get a lot of mileage out of Kerbal Space Program. It's ostensibly a game about going to space, but getting to space requires going through the atmosphere. And if you're going through the atmosphere, well, you're going to need some aerodynamics. And if you've got aerodynamics, you need to have fins. And if you make a big fin, it's a wing. And if you've got a wing, you can then have critical angles for stall. So the next thing you know, you have the ability to simulate planes. And sure, a lot of the planes in Kerbal Space Program are basically designed around going to space. But on the other hand, I run this thing called Runway Project, where we have the players design and build AI-driven aircraft and have them fly each other in combat scenarios. But generally, the aircraft that are built for Kerbal Space Program are missing a huge number of features that you would find in a standard sort of general aviation, you know, single prop aircraft, the kind of thing that I am flying. There's a lot of aerodynamic tricks that designers of real world aircraft use to make them safer, more stable and easy to fly. And you can use these in Kerbal Space Program, but nobody does. So the classic Kerbal Space Program aircraft building technique is you, you add a cockpit, build out a fuselage, add an engine, some air intakes, bolt a pair of wings onto the side, add vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizers, fill in the control surfaces, landing gear, and then you maybe spend a little bit of a time uh, adjusting the center of mass to make sure that the thing is aerodynamically somewhat stable. And sure enough, this creation takes off and flies just fine. I guess that's what happens after you play Kerbal Space Program for 10 years. Now, initially when I take off, I'm using the stability augmentation system. That is, it's a system which will try to keep the aircraft oriented correctly. And that can really help because a lot of aircraft you're going to get are going to be pretty unstable. Shockingly, this thing actually flies pretty well, even with the stability augmentation system turned on. You know, and I'm pulling off some nice simple loops and lining myself up for a low pass over the Kerbal Space Center here, flying this entirely using keyboard controls, which makes it very hard to do smooth inputs. You kind of have to like tap the key quickly to make things happen. But we can still improve this a little. Like, for a start, we should assign the control surfaces correctly. All these surfaces are doing all the things, but we can just click in and tell the flight computer to assign the wingtip control surfaces to roll, the tail to be the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer to produce uh, pitch, and the rudder will produce yaw. And then we can set these things up as flaps that can be used for landing. So now I have dedicated ailerons, and I love ailerons, because that's how I roll. So I will admit that this design is actually way better than I expected. I fully expected this to just like spin out of control and fall out of the sky without stability control. But even then, even with this pretty easy to fly aircraft, it's a long way from using all the tricks that it could. It isn't that stable, right? It's naturally unstable, or rather, it's naturally neutrally stable in roll. It will tend to just roll and roll and roll until it falls out of the sky. Um, the pitch tends to, uh, will continue downwards to the ground unless I intentionally put in some back yoke or trim 
And when it stalls, the entire wing stalls at once. Okay, so this is what I have, and it is supposed to look more like a regular sort of general aviation style aircraft. In fact, it's supposed to look somewhat similar to the Cirrus SR-20 that I fly. It's you know, got a low wing, tricycle landing gear, a single engine. So in many ways it's similar, but clearly this is a very janky Kerbal version. But the important thing is that I've taken many of the aerodynamic features found in the small aircraft and applied it to a Kerbal model. And it is flying beautifully. I'm not putting in any control inputs. I'm just putting in small trim adjustments. And it's flying basically hands-free. I'm waving my hands around. But my hands, you, know, you can't see that because I don't have the camera on me. But yeah, this is flying hands-free. It's beautiful. So one of the important things you'll find in many aircraft, not just small aircraft, you'll find these in large airliners. If you have this tail that sticks all the way back out here, the tailplane isn't actually providing lift. The tailplane is typically pushing the aircraft down and removing lift. So if I hit F12, I can bring up the force vectors and you can see the various uh, you know, vectors basically showing lift. Now, what we're seeing here, the yellow ones are the movable control surfaces and the blue ones are just the regular uh, wing surfaces. So this section at the back is actually pushing the plane down. And the reason for that is if I level this aircraft out and remove thrust, what's gonna happen is the amount of lift is gonna be reduced on the front, so the front will drop. The amount of downforce on the back will drop and so therefore it'll push it down less. The aircraft will enter a dive, pick up speed, and as it picks up speed, the forces will tend to lift the nose up and therefore keep the aircraft stable. That's a very basic thing that you'll find in many, many aircraft. In fact, it's so pervasive that one of the things that they'll talk about in you know ground school is what happens if you overload your aircraft and the center of mass is too far backwards. And the standard answer that many flight instructors will give you is because it moves the center of mass backwards, this uh, you need less downforce at the back, therefore you use less trim in these, so you have less drag acting on the rear and you go faster. And that's great unless you're flying an aircraft which has canards, little wings at the front, which lift the nose up instead, then the sort of standard assumption doesn't work. And you, I, I've seen quite a few ground schools where they ignore this particular exception. Okay, so second thing to notice is that I've got very small amount of uh, dihedral. That means the wings are angled upwards. And that's pretty common because when you have that configuration, it will tend to naturally damp out small rolls. So if I roll it slightly to the left, it's just gonna, you know, or slightly, yeah, slightly to the left in this case, it's gonna just naturally bring that roll out due to the way the aerodynamics works. Uh, you will also find that if you have a straight wing which is mounted high above the center of gravity, that can also help to stabilize the aircraft. But uh, this is what you do on low wing aircraft. You will sometimes find that high wing aircraft which have too much stability will have the wings angled downwards. That's called anhedral and that will make the aircraft slightly less stable and that will compensate for the center of mass effect. Okay, so the next feature I want you to look at is the shape of this wing. You'll see that there's actually more lift coming from the middle of this wing than there is from the outside. That is because I have actually adjusted the angle. I've twisted this wing so that it provides a steeper angle of attack towards the middle of the wing. And you'll find this in, again, general, you'll find this in many plane wings. They're designed so that they will stall from the middle rather than the ends first. Uh, and this helps by, to keep the aircraft controllable. So if I uh, start to put in too much vertical trim there and there are too much pitch trim and I cut the power, my speed is gonna drop and the aircraft is gonna sort of fall back down and start picking up speed just like before, right? Now imagine instead that we lost lift from the wingtips first. What would happen is you would have a, you could have an asymmetric stall, right? Where you, you lose lift on one side or the other first. And that would cause your plane to torque. So let's go and do that. Okay, so here is another example. I've instead 
switch the twist around so the outside of the wing has the highest angle of attack and therefore will stall before the other parts of the wing. And I anticipate that it could much more easily enter a roll if I stall the aircraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to transition into a stall here. So put the throttle in, try to apply a bit of pitch up and cut the power. And I'm just going to try and keep the nose at like a 45 degree angle. Here we go. Here we go. Here. Oh, there. And yeah, see that? We rolled out of that. And rolling out of a stall can be very bad because if you're stalling your wings and you're rolling and your yaw is out of coordination, that can transition into a spin. So having this twist on the wing is designed to make the aircraft less likely to spin. Okay, so I'm going to try and intentionally enter a spin here, and I'm using my flight sim controls instead. The way you sort of enter into the spin is you've got to be cross-coordinated, have your like yaw be way out of whack with your roll. And so I'm hammering down on my right rudder pedal and trying to roll left with my stick to keep that straight, all while keeping the nose up. And hopefully all of that stuff together, well, <laughs> Well, that, that looks like it. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah, this definitely feels like a spin. Okay. Now, to try and recover from this, you're supposed to use yaw in the opposite direction of the spin, but it seems I'm actually pitching harder. Let, let me... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. Got myself back under control. Saved myself from the spin. Then that certainly doesn't always happen. In the Cirrus SR20, the official, like... Pilot's manual tells you that to recover from a spin, you're supposed to pull the parachute. So anyway, that is a sort of quick return to Kerbal Space Program times with a new dump of knowledge that I have learned in my voyage to become a pilot. But as I said, a lot of the stuff that I learned in Kerbal was directly applicable. You know, just understanding how the wing's center of mass, all that was incredibly important. But there's a bunch of stuff I learned from aircraft design, which equally can be applied backwards to make these very nice, stable aircraft. Now, this here uses a few extra parts. But, you know, the same rules apply regardless. You can also get Ferrum Aerospace Research, which is a mod which vastly increases the complexity of the aerodynamics. And I should probably have spent some time with that, but I kind of wanted to make it more accessible. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.